Well, I'm delighted to welcome Alistair Griffin back to Sports Vibe. He's an old friend of ours, last seen performing the haughtingly beautiful Just Drive a couple of years ago. But he's back, and he's back with a very relevant anthem. Not just a song, I'd call it an anthem. We're here um, at, the, at the launch of I Wish For You The World, and perhaps you'd like to explain what it's about and why, indeed, you're sitting in front of the Olympic rings. Ah, um, well, uh, <coughs> I went to the Olympics uh, in the summer, and like, uh, like well, uh, probably anyone else who went was kind of taken by and affected by everything that, that sort of went, in, went into it, the great sport. <clears throat> but I think above all else, the, the thing that got me was um, it was the Olympics. It was about the people. And, um, and the people who made, made the games were, in large part, the games makers, fulfilling lots of roles um, within the infrastructure of the Olympics. And their sort of enthusiasm and drive was a great, great part of it. And, I thought it would be a great idea to um, work with the games makers, um, and I discovered there is a games makers choir that formed. Oh, that was just just by luck. You you didn't know that. I'd, I'd sit, I mean I think anyone who went or been on YouTube that have seen this, there was lots of impromptu sort of performances. People you know directing people to the tube. Oh, they just it was as if they swallowed happy pills. Yes. Yeah. Maybe they had. <laughs> well, uh, I would like. To, I'll ask them later. Um, but yeah, so I, I stumbled across the choir, and I thought, perfect. You know, I think this they they should have their moment in, uh, in the spotlight. And um, I'd already started writing this song. I thought it'd be nice to turn anthemic with a choir on it. And um, and I got in touch, and, and the rest is history. Well, you got in touch with the Mayor of London, uh, the shy and unassuming Boris Johnson, who who loves it by all accounts. Yeah, well, he was one of the first people I sent the track to, and quite sort of surprisingly, in my inbox appeared um, an email from uh, from him saying, "I love it. You know, what can I do? What can I do to help?" And uh, so he's yeah, he's, he's been very supportive and very kind about it. I mean, the Olympics obviously got to you to, to go to these extremes to write a song, get a choir, and he, here we are. But it, it really did. Uh, I, I don't know. It sort of regained self-esteem in this country. It made us look at ourselves and. Perhaps for a few weeks, stop knocking ourselves, which is what we mm. normally tend to do, which is what we're happiest doing. Mm. And uh, we just got it so right, didn't we, yeah. as a country? And I guess that must have fueled you. Yeah, I mean, there's all that cynicism before, you know, the opening ceremony, and I think that, that sort of thing sort of uh, kicked on from there, really. It, it became, you know, this sort of runaway success that possibly no one expected. And I think, you know, having gone to the Olympic Park, you kind of you realise that, uh, as you say, it was a, it was a sort of two weeks that we should spin out into, you know, three weeks a month, the rest of, you know, the rest of the year, and that, that's what this song was about, and, and working with the games makers, and that's what they want. They want to sort of keep adding to this legacy, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, in my tiny way, I hope, you know, this song does a bit of that because obviously it's going to Olympic charities to fund future athletes. Yeah and it would be wonderful, I was lucky enough to be there pretty much every day so, so like you I was, I was enthused by, by, by everything but particularly the games makers who were absolutely fantastic and it would be lovely to bottle that if you could and, and just keep sp sprinkling it around a little bit and as, as opposed to sort of a distant memory of two very very happy weeks before we get back to our you yeah. know our drudgery. Mm, that's right, that's right. And, Things like this, you know, some people will, you know, be cynical, and I know that people say at the games makers, you know, they see them walking down the street in their uniform and they say, "Oh, the Olympics finished." You know, you know, it's finished, and you got to sort of look past that and. Uh, or legacy, legacy is the big word, isn't it? Legacy, and it's not yeah. just from a sport point of view. Well, I think, yeah, legacy. It's almost, it's almost, uh, it's almost got a bit of a cliche. Legacy, you know, it's sort of become a word that we can all sort of cling to. But the reality is, you need to do things like this. You, and this is like the epitome of the legacy, actually, really, because I mean, we're all doing it for nothing. You know, it's, it's well, we're not doing it for nothing. We're doing it to raise money once again for, you know, for, for charity um, and sport, and putting money back into sport. And if anybody uh, points the finger and says, "Ah, oh, you're just jumping on the sporting bandwagon," we should point out you are a huge Formula One fan, and of course, uh, Just Drive was the theme tune to uh, BBC's Formula One coverage and Sky. And Sky. Um, and you're also a huge Middlesbrough football yeah. fan, so for all your for your pain. So you know you're a massive sports fan, aren't you? Yeah, I am, and um, I've, I've you know I've played sport, yeah, not, not to any great standard, but um, 
and I, I love watching sport, anything, absolutely any sport I, I watch. And you went to the hockey, I understand, at the Olympics, yeah, which, which underlines your point. It's quite terrible. Um, <laughs> Team GB got beat. Uh, but no, and I think really that's where my synergy with songs and sport come in. You know, it's like, I think, particularly you know, when you see a, a dodgy England World Cup song, you can tell the person who wrote it knows nothing about football, that they are jumping on the bandwagon. Whereas my stuff is kind of, it just comes naturally. Yeah, yeah. Now the thing is as well, I mean, whisper it quietly, but uh, your anthem, uh, I wish for you the world is uh, is getting a lot of interest, and um, I mean here we are. It's mid December. What's the biggest number one you could possibly get? And uh, I know we're not there yet, but um, you know it's gaining momentum. I mean, how cool would that be? Well, it was, <laughs> it's funny because it was never really never intended to be a, a Christmas-based song, um, but yeah, people. <laughs> if you release a song around Christmas, people are always thinking you're going for the Christmas number one. I, you know, there's a choir involved, so. I, I see where people draw that from, but um, it's, it's not about chart positions. Although I did see uh, the book bookies had slashed us to ten to one this morning. Oh, that's uh, pretty good. That's, yeah. I mean, it's very exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite funny. I mean, wh whether it will happen or not, I don't know. Really, for us, it's about get, doing something good, keeping this feel good alive. Sure. And uh, if it gets a position in the charts, then great. I'll tell you what, if it does get up there, or, or even close, never mind the fact that you can say it's great on number two or number one, whatever, but just in terms of the awareness and the raising the money for the charities, which is what you're also doing. So for that point of view, it will be fantastic. Yeah, and it, that's the, the lovely thing about it. You know, the, the games makers turned out and were a huge part of putting on the Olympics. And now they want to carry it on and they're back again and they're doing it. They're volunteering again to raise money for, you know, for future Olympians and Paralympians. And uh, I think that's fantastic. Just, Ticks all the boxes. And um, also the Paralympics, how good were they? I mean, uh, the Brits don't normally do proud, do they? They're not, they don't sort of like to shout from the rooftops, I'm British and I'm proud. But it was a, it was a proud summer, wasn't it, to oh, be in this country? Absolutely. And yeah, you're right, the Paralympics were phenomenal. And it was great because the Paralympics doesn't always get a, um, an airing, you know. In, uh, it's normally like the poor relative, isn't it? Yeah, the distant it, relative. It, it not often, this time. No, it often is. Not, not forgotten, and not, I don't think in this country, but in other countries it, it, it doesn't get its, its hearing, but because the Olympics sort of set everyone up, you know, tickets were sort of flying out, out the door and um, it gave it a great platform and it, the platform it deserves. And uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a year to be proud to be British. Yeah. Finally, any particular highlights for you uh, from those Olympics? I mean, there were so many, weren't there? But uh, I was there to see, to see Mo win both golds and uh, 82,000 people were, were off their feet. Yeah. I was outside. I was outside on the hill, but you know it was one of them moments. You know we were right up on the hill where people with the Olympic rings and watching it on the big screen. And yeah, I was just it was a it was a real hairs on the back of the neck moment that you know live long in the memory. I mean, and the other thing for me is I watched it all on the telly. And one of the it's, I love watching the sort of the minority sports. And when um, is it Gemma Gibbons. The silver in the, uh, in the judo. The judo. That was my sort of on the sofa Olympic yeah. one. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Well, uh, I think this song's going to put a lot of uh, hairs on the back of people's necks standing up as well. So many congratulations. Let's hope it goes all the way. And um, and thank you for sharing it with the rest of us.